Mr. Smith is the architect behind the current tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Trump is a reinforced concrete skyscraper, architectural spire, glass steel curtain that makes up the facade. The building at 1,362 feet include the architectural spire. It is part of the skeletal design. However, when we look at both the former Sears and our Hancock building, they have antennas. And because antennas are not physically part of the skeleton, they don't need to be included in the heights offer. Inside Trump, we have 472 luxury condominiums with the five-star hotels on the first 24 floors. Do not worry, ladies and gentlemen. You can still be neighbors with Donald Trump and Derrick Rose. Those penthouses go for a bargain rate nowadays. They only cap out around $8 million. So as we discuss architecture this okay. evening, for majority of the tour, I'm going to refer to buildings to the right side of the direction we're traveling. If I ever need you to look anywhere else, I will always let you know. But for majority of the tour, I'm going to be referring to buildings on the right side of the direction we're traveling. Uh -huh. As we clear the bridge, we're in front of 330 Wabash, or the former IBM building. Architect Ludwig Mies Van Der He is the father of modernistic architecture, but like 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 modernism is referred to as easy and after him. This building is a beautiful example of modernism. Note this lack of ornamentation. You only have these dark eye beams to draw your eyes upwards. Within modernism, there's a less is more philosophy. Our buildings are for function as opposed to style. Bertrand Goldberg, the next architect, has an organic approach to his designs. Even though he studies underneath Van der Rohe, he actually rejects the use of right angles at work because of the lack of right angles within nature. That is going to be evident in Marine City. These are often referred to as our corn cobs in the Midwest. The towers are completed in the mid-1960s and are the first residential buildings along the river. A city and a city concept. So combined, one time they actually held 896 apartments, office space, retail space, grocery store, dry cleaning, movie theater, bowling alley, restaurant, and marina, to name a few amenities for residents. Fun to think about them like they're tree houses. So the trunks would be the elevator shafts for the core. The apartments are leaf circular pie shaped falling off the core. See how they back their cars into parking the spaces? A requirement so no one gets stuck in acceleration and winds up in the river. It's tricky, but as you clear the bridge, look behind you and to the right, off the court cop buildings. House of Blues in Chicago, down the street, behind you and to the right. But originally, that's the Marina City Movie Theater. House of Blues. The two buildings that are immediately to the right-hand side are both completed in 1987. We have a tan building with dark glass. It's our Western River North. Originally, Hotel Nito, Japan Airlines. The blue glass building with the steel eye beams is our American Bar Association by architect Bruce Graham. Mr. Graham also designed their former Sears in the Hancock building. Back in the day, Quaker Oats lived there. When they resided in the building, they had the world's largest container of Quaker Oats sitting in the front lobby. The Reed Murdoch Center is a gorgeous example of the architecture on the river over 90 years ago. 1914, George Nemmons. Here is a reinforced concrete building with a masonry exterior and terracotta ornamentation. At first glance, this building looks as though it's symmetrical. But check it out again. We have more bays, or sets of windows, to the east or right side of this building than the left or west side, because one uh -huh. bay of windows is removed for the winding up of the South Street Bridge. 300 North LaSalle will be the glass skyscraper coming into view as we clear the bridge. This building is completed in 2009 by Pickard and Chilton Architects, and it has a gold lead standard. So lead is a term that we get to hear more and more in our contemporary architecture. It stands for leadership, energy, and environmental design. This is a very green building. For example, instead of a traditional AC system, it takes the river water to cool it. That water is re-entered into the river cleaner than it left. Saves our building electricity. And Chicago, over 1.5 million gallons of drinking water. I have a Oh gosh. Oh my god. That looks so good. The merchandise mark with a silver lead standard is the world's largest lead rated building. Art Deco in style. This is completed in 1931. Hi. To consolidate 14 major wholesale warehouses in Marshall Field. This building is the largest in the world for interior space until the completion of the Pentagon. It sits on two city blocks, five acres, has 14 miles of corridor, 
Wow. 4.25 million square feet in space. Wow. It is so massive until a few years ago it had its own zip code. Kennedy yeah. family purchased the building after the depression on back taxes and they get it for a bargain. Only 13 million. They sell it in the late 1990s at a small profit of 575 million. Oh now you can imagine a building so massive that it had its own zip code would have all the space they could ask for. But in the 1970s, we had this extension on next door. The building is currently home to the Chicago Sun-Times. But originally, that is the Apparel Mart. It's an apparel showroom for Merchandise Mart. This building is originally constructed without windows. Because in apparel, we have to view an artificial light as opposed to natural light. The new tenants move in. Of course, they would like a little sun in their hallways. They have those windows. Does not help our building. The American Institute of Architects still vote this one of the dreariest on the river. Now, if you see that parking lot right in front of the building, I know, a parking lot's not exciting, but that's downtown Chicago, 1825, historical Wolf Point. This is where we decided the name for the city. So Chicago or Chicagua is a Native American term coming from about three different tribes, Illinois, Miami, and Potawatomi. And it means roughly two different things. Strong and powerful, which we are, and wild smiles, which we really just ignore. We are entering the North Branch of the River. Briefly pull your attention to the front left of our boat. When I need you to go back to the right, I'll let you know. But right now, look front to the left. And as we turn into the North Branch, there's an unusually narrow building. It's our residences of River Bend. 2002 to Stefano Partners, so narrow to accommodate this bend in the North Branch. They've done something kind of cool. They put all the corridors and hallways on the western side, leaving every unit, you might want to grab your cameras, with the breathtaking eastern view behind us in our main branch of the river. Now this building is actually so, so awesome. narrow, they were not able to fit a traditional parking garage or ramp. If you own a car, you simply have to drive it up. You can't your to a valet. The pink building to the front left of us is the Fulton House. 1908, though, that's the North American Fulton <laughs> Warehouse by architect Frank Diaco. In the early 1900s, the walls are lined with frozen horse hair and work for insulation. 1982, the architect Harry Weiss converts this building into condominiums. A sailor, Weiss embraces strong nautical themes. So we can see where he left his fingerprints, with the porthole windows at the top, starfish up and down the side showing reinforcement beams. We just had to let this building thaw out for over an entire year before he removed like five of the walls, of course, near a cork from inside those walls, and began reconstruction. We just also used like to serve Chicago building. River Cottages. In this, this series. One. Yeah. So, the four cottages on your left, completed in the late 1980s by architect Harry Weiss. Strong emphasis on triangles, reflective of mass on sailboats, and then more portal windows, continuing the nautical themes we decided to fit in for. Now, every one of those townhomes is provided with their own docking slip, elevator, as well as private parking. It is difficult for us to assess the values of the cottages. The original owners have yet to put them on the market. All right, so to your right-hand side is the East Bank Club, Sports Health and Fitness Club. 1970s, Ezra Gordon and Jack and Lebanon Associates. So in the 1970s, the Chicago River is polluted. This building is constructed where its back is facing west or it's even turning on the river. As we've cleaned up the Chicago River, we've drawn a little more attention to this side of the building. We have a new seawall, landscaping, and a walkway that have been added. The health club is what we refer to as where the jet sets were. Along with an okay-sized membership, this club has had members along the lines of President Obama when he was a resident of our city, or you might simply turn around and find no problem with the next to you. Left-hand side, Kinsey Park came into view. The series of red brick townhomes are completed in 2001 by Papa George and Haynes. These are modeled to look like European row houses, a strong emphasis on rooftop terraces and balconies. Like, uh, Note the river promenade in front of the townhomes. Now, it's interesting to see the actual evolution of our attitude to the river. So, we saw, to the right, late 1970s, a clear rejection of the river when it's polluted. Early 2000s to your left, we've cleaned up the river and started to embrace it. As we cleaned up the Chicago River, especially on this north branch, a residential boom happened. Every one of those townhomes to your left sold for 1.2 million. They all sold before the ground broke okay. development. As we clear the bridge to your right hand side, the riverbank lofts come into view. These are a beautiful example of adaptive reuse within architecture. Look how rusty that thing is. So the riverbank lofts are completed. See how rusty it is. A great example of adaptive reuse in architecture. In the early 1900s, the Chicago River heavily industrialized. 
Slowly as that industry picks up and moves away, we discover that the sound structural buildings left behind be ideal residential spaces. That's the term adaptive reuse. The 1909 that right the printing house funding by architect George Nemmons. He gives us the Reed Murdoch Center, the asymmetrical building on the main branch. Today, home to a soft loft space. Chicago has a little bit of a love affair with the soft loft that refers to a completely open living area. Nothing actually divides our living room, our dining room, or our kitchen. One big open space. This is so common residentially because of all of the freedom that is offered to the residents to lay out their floor plans and how they see it accordingly. As you keep your attention on the right hand side, two pale condominium towers coming into view, dramatic steel brass bracing. At first glance, these ladies will look like they're twins, but they're more like sisters. These are slightly different. This is Erie and Kent's Ferry on the Park, 2002, by Lucien Lagrange and Associates. Severe European style accounts for that dramatic steel cross bracing with setback terraces. Plans originally called for three of these towers, but the city said no to the third one in favor of adding a park in front of the two. Do your best to look to the front right of our boat, two buildings over from the river. There's a blue glass skyscraper with stone columns on either side. So that's to the front right of us, two buildings over from the river, the blue glass skyscraper with stone columns on either side. It's going to disappear in the next few seconds. That's the Montgomery. Originally, that is the corporate headquarters for Montgomery Ward catalog. Currently, the building is home to the Chicago-based company, Groupon. Yeah. Yeah, most people like that. <laughs> yeah. So the building is designed by the architect, Midori Yamasaki. A few people know Yamasaki's name. He is the architect who gave us the World Trade Centers in New York. But that building, pretty different than most of his other designs. For the corporate headquarters. He decided he was going to embrace Aaron Montgomery Ward's philosophy. The founder of the catalog, Aaron Montgomery Ward, was known for disapproving of a physical way to show priority or preference among his employees. Ward believed that this created undue competition with his workers. Fast forward, all those years later in the 1970s, Yamasaki sits down, designed the corporate headquarters, and he just thinks 